Okay. Today we're going to talk a little bit about IR interpretation. So first, IR can be thought of kind of like a mass on a spring or a ball on a spring. And depending on how fast it'll move up and down or oscillate, depends on the mass of that ball and the strength of the spring. In other words, we can think about this in terms of atoms and bonds. The lighter the mass or the lighter the, the atom weight, in this case, we can think about like hydrogen is our lowest mass, the faster it'll oscillate or the higher energy it'll be at. In other words, it'll show up further left on our IR spectra. The stronger the bond, so like triple bonds are stronger than double bonds, which are stronger than single bonds, the faster it'll oscillate and the further it'll show up to the left on our spectra. All right, let's take and look at an example. So here's our oscillating springs. Let's put on different masses and see how they work. Here's a lower mass and here's a larger mass. Notice the smaller mass is moving up and down a lot faster in a shorter period of time than the bigger mass. So think about this in terms of hydrogen. Hydrogen is our lowest mass. It's going to appear in the highest energies for this to our left on our spectra. Let's change these out a little bit. Put on the same masses on each. And let's change the spring strength or our bond strength. So over here on number one, that's like our single bond. And number two might be a triple bond or a double bond. So we can see that the stronger bond is going up and down a lot faster than our single bond. All right. Let's try a cup, see if we can fill out this table. So on an IR spectra, we got different regions. In that very highest energy region are going to be things that are bonded to hydrogen. Okay. So like our OHs, our NHs, our CHs, okay, those are all going to be in this highest energy region. Our next one would be thinking about the strength of the spring. This is going to be our triple bond region. So we only got a couple types of triple bonds. We got C triple bond Cs and C triple bond Ns. Okay. And in the next region, we got a double bonded region. So we're talking C double bonded Cs, C double bonded Os, C double bonded Ns. We can think about these first two are probably more common than this last one. And then our next region is our single bonded region. All sorts of single bonds that we can think of. One thing to keep in mind, the more of a difference in atom polarizability, the stronger the absorption will be for all of these. So in other words, a C triple bond N is going to be a lot easier to see than a C triple bond C. And in our last region, we have the fingerprint. Okay, out of these five regions, we really don't look at the fingerprint that much. There are not many groups that show up in the triple bond region. So we're really focusing on our things bonded to hydrogen, our double bond, and our single bond regions. So, when you're interpreting IR spectra, you want to look at what's there and also what's not there to try and figure out what functional group you have. So let's go through a couple examples. So let's look at an alcohol versus a carboxylic acid. So on an alcohol, we have an OH. Okay, OHs are going to appear in that things bonded to hydrogen region all the way to the left. In a carboxylic acid, we also have an OH, but we have one other thing that we don't have in an in an alcohol, we have a C double bonded O. So let's look at two spectra, see if we can figure it out. I see 
an OH right there, and I see an OH right there. I don't see a peak corresponding to a C double bonded O there, but I see one here. So I would say that this is my carboxylic acid and that's my alcohol. So remember to look at what's there and what's not there. Let's look at some other functional groups, esters versus ketones. So in an ester and a ketone, they both have a C double bonded O. Esters have a C single bonded O also. So let's look at two spectra. Well, I'm seeing that I have my C double bonded O here and my C double bonded O right there. I see on this one that I have a pretty good absorption in their single bond region, much better than over here. And I would assume that that's probably my C single bonded O that corresponds to my ester, and the other one is my ketone. Okay, it takes practice, guys. So what I want you to do is remember to keep looking for what's there and what's not there.